<clears throat> Welcome back. What I've put together here are all the parts that we need to put together the declination axis. Okay, so we have the saddle, the shaft, the declination worm gear, the various uh, spacers and such that we need. Uh, we have the worm assembly, and then here's the declination housing and the declination setting circle. One thing I want to comment on, so I built, uh, put together the second worm assembly, okay, it's got exactly the same as the first. I'd mentioned how the worm on one side of the shaft has more length than the other side. Make sure that when you put these together, the side with the longer shaft side goes on where the nut, uh, the locking nuts are, okay. This takes up space, and when you're done, you still have enough shaft on both sides to work with. If this was inverted, you could put it in backwards, short shaft would be on this side and with the locking nut you'd have almost nothing to work with so when you put these together it should make sense when you get it together and you go oh okay i have plenty of room but if you get it wrong you'll be very it'll be obvious you have to take it apart and invert your your worm gear so we're going to take the one housing here in this case the declination housing has the arrow on it i'd mentioned that they're interchangeable but that's the only difference if you don't have an arrow if you have a replacement that doesn't have it there's a, you can put a paint mark or something like that there. This is just a point for the declination setting circle. And so you can use any sort of mark you want there to replace that. Uh, so as well, we have the large plastic spacer here. This has the extra little flange piece here. We have two of these fiber washers. Now, if I bring the other two in, you'll see that the two that we want for the declination housing are the ones that are matched in size. The other two are larger and thinner. Okay, we don't want those. We want these two matched ones. And uh, this is part of the assembly that screws on the end of the shaft to hold it in place. So, uh, to put this all together, if we remember from the videos before, one of these washers ends up inside the housing. And these two fiber washers actually ride on each other as one of the main bearings. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to take our grease. We're just going to get in there. And we're going to put not much, but make sure you liberally coat it. We're going to coat it on both sides. Okay. Go ahead and get your fingers in there and just... Get that coated on both sides. And that sets down here inside this declination housing. Okay, there's a little flat there and it sits down in there. Then, if you remember, we had this plastic spacer, which uh, as well can get greased. Again, both sides. You know, you don't want the grease piled up and, and everywhere. You just want everything lubricated. So get in there with your fingers. And so you remember that has that extra flange here. That sits here on this cutout. So this should drop right in and sit there just fine. So it holds itself in place. Okay. Then we have the worm gear. Okay, the declination worm gear. And that sits on this shaft. And if you remember, when we took that apart, there was a one of the fiber washers was sitting on the worm gear, and so one of the fiber washers was sitting on the worm gear here, and then underneath the worm gear, there's nothing. So when it comes together like this sitting there like that 
And when this inverts then into this housing, those two fiber washers contact each other. So let's take this apart. Get some grease on this fiber washer. I'm just going to hang it there for now. So for the worm gear, easiest way is to put some grease on your finger and just run it through, through the bore. Like that. We'll grease this surface here and a little bit here. That should spin freely there, and we have our fiber washer there. So now at this point, you have grease all over your hands, so it's a good idea to wash, wipe them off. Now if we pick up the housing here and spin it, we see that it spins nice and freely. It sound good, there shouldn't be any sort of binding or anything involved. And of course, I put the worm gear on backwards. The teeth go on the inside here. Okay. So you remember that our worm assembly sits right here. If you look down inside there, you can see the worms, worm gear and worm tooth, worm wheel contacting. Okay, so there was four screws that were involved here. Two of these shorter ones and two longer ones. Longer ones go down and there. So before we contact, before we put this together, let's get some more grease on the worm itself. So we can slide it off here and we'll just put some grease right here on these teeth. It's easier to do it now and the easiest way to get grease down on the teeth is to run your finger back and forth along them like that. That's plenty there. Put this back together. Wipe our hands off again. So now we have our assembly here. Okay. So you can generally, you can often start these screws by finger just to get them located. And the shorter screws go in here. Okay, they're a little bit harder to get to. Let's find, in this case, it's a four millimeter hex wrench. And we'll just get them spun in a few turns so they stay still. We don't want anything tight just yet. We just want them in place. You might remember when we were taking this apart, I mentioned there's a central screw here, which is actually a set screw, and that's used to set the spacing on this assembly. So one of the things you can do is back that off, and that lets everything float a little bit more freely. So for right now, our assembly is pretty loose. We'll take all these screws and we'll just make them uh, 
about a one turn, three quarters turn loose. The whole assembly can rattle a little bit and our worm wheel spins pretty freely. In fact, you can sit here and just by hand spin all the way around once or twice just to make sure nothing binds up. You should, this will help distribute the grease. You can make sure nothing binds up. And another trick, if you know that everything is aligned properly and things are not going to bind up on you, one way if you want to check stuff quickly is take a hand-powered drill and you can actually grab the shaft with the drill here Grab the, dra the shaft with the drill and hold it with the other hand. Gently turn the whole thing. So, this will distribute the grease very quickly. Go both directions. You'll know pretty quickly if something is binding up. Um, it's better to run this through by hand first to make sure, but then if you want to run it with the drill, you can. So now that we have this all kind of put together, let's put the rest of this housing together so we can have it static and pinched in place. Our declination setting circle sits on here. And let me flip it over. For these, the numbers are on the housing side, not on the saddle side. Okay? So they're easier to read when you have it set up. <clears throat> and you take your saddle with your fiber washer there. You have a fiber washer inside there. So just bring the whole thing together. <clears throat> now, remember in here, with the threads, that was the end of the shaft. So take your plastic washer, put it there first. That's the bearing surface. Then your metal washer. Then your lock nut. And this can be a little bit difficult to get in there. Use whatever technique you need to get that nut started. There we go. Okay, so now it's in place. So one thing that's smart to do is take this whole assembly and just spin it a couple of times to make sure it feels comfortable. And then we're going to sit here and kind of balance it in place. And we're going to figure out what wrench we need. In this case, I believe it was 16 millimeters. So we'll take the wrench and we'll pin it and hold it in there. There we go. Then we can take the whole assembly like that and spin it to tighten things. Now, if you get it too tight, you'll immediately bind things up. And you can tell, you'll feel that. So one of the things we want to do then is just go back just enough. Just until we don't feel binding. You're probably talking 16th of a turn difference between it being bound up and not. And your declination setting circle should rotate freely. 
got that lock screw there that we can put use later, but for right now. So you can see how smoothly this turns now compared to what we had before. I might even just make it just a shade tighter. This has just a bit of binding at one point, but it's much better than it was. This will wear in a little bit. And after a while, if you find that it's still too tight, you can go in. It's very easy to access this nut and just loosen it again. Sixteenth of a turn, maybe even less. Just by holding the nut and turning the saddle assembly. There we go. That feels pretty good. So that's the declination axis put back together. Okay. Now what we still have is we still have of our all of our nuts here, our, our screws here are loose. So our worm is still sitting loose in this assembly. So we still need to adjust that. Okay, so that's still sitting there kind of rattling around.